Hello and welcome to tutorial 139 in this series of programs and tutorials for TradeStation Easy Language. This tutorial will look at adding charts, uh, adding multiple charts to a chart. And these, what I mean by charts, are these little um, charts to the right of the, uh, the main price chart. What I'm doing is showing some information that's coming from the time and sales provider and the market depth provider. But that information is not really uh, important for the sake of this video. The main thrust of the video is describing how these charts are created. Now, just to, uh, to tell you what the charts are, just uh, if you're curious, so the chart at the top with the green background, that is the last bid and ask, and that's coming from the time and sales provider. The second chart with the red background, that is looking at the total size of a certain number of bid ask levels from the market depth provider. And then charts three and four, that is the violet and uh, cyan backgrounds. They're showing the number of trades at the bid price or the ask price and that information is coming from the time and sales provider and i've got this applied to a bitcoin futures chart so let's go to the code now what i've done is used the toolbox quite extensively and the only problem with that is the code that we get contains a lot more information a lot more sort of default values and things like that so you probably need to uh, tidy that up a bit but just to go through that in broad uh, broad the broad principle of that if we wanted a particular um, tool we could for example click on the market depth provider and then go to properties adjust whichever properties we happen to know and having done oh and also create a update event just by double clicking i'm not going to do that at the moment and then if we go to the designer generated code we can copy the code that's been created put that into our program and then we can edit it in the program but what we need to do must remember to do is delete it from here otherwise you get an error because you've got the same code twice effectively now if the tool that you want doesn't appear here you can right click on this little bar here say choose items and then choose the items that you want now as far as the form is concerned which is what where we place these little uh, charts slightly different what we do is we right click here we say add form the form appears then we can design the form and we get the uh, information for that from here under win forms that only appears when there is a form on the chart we could for example choose a chart and we could edit it a little bit we could go to properties we could say well uh, we don't want this type of chart we want another type of chart so we could go to the chart series click on the uh, the uh, the three dots whatever they're called and then for example if we don't want a column chart we could choose another type of chart so uh, let's just go for say a Renko chart and then having done that we can go to again to the designer generated code and copy and paste what we can also do here is see the form of how the program is creating this chart so we're creating the form and uh, we're specifying the values for that form then we're specifying the values for the chart and then we add the chart series that is the basic code that we're going to be replicating in our program but the difference is there's a lot of code here that is not really necessary because it the default works fine so you'll see that the code in the program looks uh, a lot more simple than this the other thing is that uh, when we don't want to use this anymore in terms of the toolbox, you'll notice there is no item here saying form. So what we need to do is open the resource view and click on form or right click on form and then say delete form. And that's going to delete that. And you'll also see now that the designer generated code is empty. Okay, so let's go to the form. And as I said at the beginning, the main uh, um, thing of this tutorial is not to look at the market depth provider or the time and sales provider, but to look at how I've created the charts. And uh, if you just go right to the end, and incidentally, this program is going to be available for download for a nominal fee. But if we go right down to the bottom here, you'll see we're calling a chart create method and that's creating 
the four charts and this method is one that I have created and it's got several inputs and two outputs. So the first input is the title of the chart, the second input the background and this notice is using the color dot color uh, construct. The next one is the chart series uh, rather ch series chart type and uh, it, had we looked more closely at the designer generated code that I just showed you, you'd be able to get an idea of what the different syntaxes are for the various different types of chart. In ours we're using a pie, a bubble, a column and a bar chart. And then finally this uh, this is going to output two things. One is the chart and you can see here we're calling the chart underscore chart underscore chart two, three, four, etc. But what it also outputs is the series so that we have a series, a data series associated with each chart and that uh, is also output. And the reason for that is because this is updated when the data is updated so that the, uh, the chart is continually updated. So uh, if we just look at the uh, form here, I've called it dashboard. So we created a form we docked the form, then we're going to do the uh, the magic stuff in the method, and then we're going to show the the dashboard. So then we're going to do the 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 stuff in the method, and then we're going to show the dashboard so it appears on our chart. So let's go to the chart create method, and what I'm going to do is just try and talk through that a little bit and uh, explain exactly how it works. So in order to explain the flow of creating a chart in tutorial 139, what I'm going to do is just uh, create a chart using the toolbox and then uh, examine the designer generated code to give us a sort of template of the flow of how this works. So what I've got here is a blank program. I'm going to right click and say add form and then I'm going to go to the toolbox. I'm going to add a chart and I'm going to add a label like so. And uh, we can resize these or it, no, it doesn't really matter for the sake of uh, the program that we're doing. Now this uh, chart has got sort of dummy data on it at the moment. And what we're going to do is just add our own little bit of data so we can see how points are added. And uh, we do that here in uh, chart, the chart series. And you'll see we've got a series, but then the series itself is made up of points collection. So we can go there and now we can add some points. So let's just do that quite simply. We're going to put a, a X uh, zero Y four and we can add another point, make Y five and then add another point. Let's make Y two. So we've got three points on there added to our chart. Now, having done that, we've got the chart, we've got the label, we've got some uh, data points. We can now examine the designer generated code and see how TradeStation uh, creates a program like that. So we need to go view designer generated code and we'll see the code. So first thing we need to do is uh, create a new form, a new label and a new chart as uh, we normally do. Now in terms of the form, that was the first thing we created. We're going to be adding to that the label and we're going to add to that the chart. So as we go down, we will see that uh, the first thing that it's doing here is creating that label. And uh, as I mentioned before, a lot of this uh, syntax is not necessary. So what we can do is just go through and delete that, which, which is not necessary, which we're not using, or rather we're using the default and um, that makes things a lot more simplified. And you'll see that in tutorial 139 if you download it. So the next thing we do is we create the, the chart area. Now that is where the axes and various things uh, to do with the chart are defined. And that is then added to the chart using chart areas dot add. So we create the area, then we add that to the chart and then the chart series. Now these are the data points we just added and you'll see here the syntax is as so now we're not actually going to use this exact syntax here because we're going to use something slightly different that has the same effect. But that information is added to the chart series and the same for the next point and the next point. And then the um, chart series 
uh, is added to the chart using add chart series and that's the uh, definition of the chart uh, object so let's just uh, go through that probably from bottom to top is better uh, we create this chart object then to that we're adding the chart series which is our data effectively and uh, what we're also adding to it is the chart area which is where we define axes and uh, back gradient style and uh, how we align it with the chart etc etc and then we define the label which is just uh, more or less standalone and then we add both the label and the chart to the form okay so we'll see that pattern in the method that I've created in the program so uh, the first thing we're going to do is let's just look where we call the method and uh, I've called the form dashboard because it's a sort of dashboard of little little charts so we create the dashboard we create the form and we tell the form where to dock having done that we're then calling this method to create the chart and because we're doing the same thing over and over again just with changes such as the uh, the type of chart and the color of the background and so on that lends itself to being done in a method so let's see if we can find the chart create method and here it is and you'll see that we've got one two three inputs the title the background color and the chart type and then we're outputting both the chart itself and the chart series because we're going to want to modify that as the information is updated so similar syntax to uh, to what we have in the design generated code just for the uh, default type of chart that you get when you uh, use the uh, the chart button in the toolbox we create the chart start with new chart um, we create the area new area and we create the chart series new 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 and if you uh, remember that's what we had right at the beginning of the program here for the uh, designer generated code having done that what we now need to do is add some uh, meat to the bone so the new chart we're telling it where to dock the new area we're adding that to the new chart which again we did in the previous version and you'll notice how much less syntax there is here than there is in the designer generated code although the designer generated code doesn't do any harm it's just very difficult to manage with such a, a, a large number of lines and then we're creating the series uh, we're telling the, uh, the new series what chart type and uh, we're adding to the chart a series so we've got the chart we're adding the date chart area and we're adding the chart series so that is how that works um, having done that we create the label as well and the uh, the dashboard this is the form we're adding the label now this runs every time we call it so for example the first time we're creating a uh, dark cyan background a pie chart and we're going to be using to populate that the data from series the next one is going to be using a bubble chart and we're using series two the next one series three and series four etc so uh, we've got four distinct series of data and that data is updated elsewhere in the program depending on on what uh, what it is that we're displaying so just to go back um, if we were to want to display the last bid and the last ask then we would use the uh, the syntax as follow but we would be adding those to series four so that is updated whenever and this is in a update event that is updated whenever the uh, time and sales is updated now you'll notice that whereas in the design and generated code we're saying that the point let's just see if we can find that is set up by specifying the x value and the y value we are doing the equivalent here just slightly more succinctly using create where zero is the x and last ask is the y zero is the x and last bid is the uh, the y depending on whether we're showing the bid 
or the ask. Okay, so that's a very quick uh, quick introduction to this. Please, uh, if you want to download it, it is available. And uh, please also go to our website and sign up for this email list and also our YouTube list. So hopefully you'll find this useful. Thank you.